Good friends, welcome back to Managing the Magpies. As you can probably see, uh, not going great so far, to be honest with you. We're 14th in the league. Um, good signs are we haven't, we haven't lost any games yet. Uh, <laughs> considering we haven't lost any, we're probably... Um, it's, it's probably pretty obvious what's happened. Well, you can see you can see what's happened here, um, but we're going to jump straight into it, um, and, and I'm going to kind of give you a talk through uh, you know all of the results. So uh, we ended last episode here on a two-two draw against Fulham, which not ideal, but away from home, I can I can take a draw. I'm not I'm not you know not too disappointed with that. Start of the season, it is what it is. So into our first home game. At St James's Park, we played against Huddersfield. Uh, now, to be honest with you, it was a fairly close game, <clears throat> but we just put our chances away. And as you can see here, Dwight Gill uh, completed a hat trick within 15 minutes, so that put us three 0 up. We were done for basically. We the, the game was over. Um, in the 60th minute, then Czech Tioto gets sent off. I'm like, okay, well, it's not ideal. But we're gonna, you know, we'll, we'll we'll do what we can. So I take off Ayose Perez, I think. Yep, I take off a Rose Ayose Perez and Matt Ritchie, apparently. Um, and I bring on Aaron's and Colback, and uh, I I shift to uh, a counter attacking style of play. They bring one back with Aaron Moy, and then we get another penalty. Chandra Shabi ducks that away. They get another consolation goal just after that. But we end it four two. Happy with that. Good result. Our next game is against Reading. Um, and we were the dominant team here, honestly. Um, we were the much better team. We did pick up an injury to Christian Atsu, which wasn't ideal, as you can see here. Uh, uh, it doesn't tell us here. If I click on him, here we go. He's out for five weeks, which isn't great. He's At the moment, he's our star player. He's the best player we've got on our team. And we're without him for five weeks. Um, other than that, nothing really happened in this game. It was a nil-nil, a board draw. There really weren't many chances. Um, we were the better side on paper, though. Uh, and then we played Bristol City. At the time, Bristol City were the top of the league. Where are they now? Well, they've fallen. Oh, have they? Yeah, so they were top of the league. I think they've lost since then. Um, but I think they were top when we played them. Maybe I think, I'm thinking of someone else. Anyway, uh, we played Bristol City. And I'm a little bit worried about this. Away from home. Um, they went 2-0 up. <clears throat> And I was like, shit, this is going to be a disaster. And Bemba pulls one back, and then Gail gets a goal as well. And we managed to close it out 2 all. So, overall, considering the fact that we went 2-0 down, I wasn't too disappointed with it. I was pretty happy uh, with with that result. Performance-wise, it's not not great. Uh, we had a good performance out of Mbemba, but that's probably because he scored a goal. But other than that, nothing ideal. Bashilia got picked up a, a, a light knock here as well, and Aaron's got an injury in this game as well. So at the moment, injury-wise, not going great. Our next game was against Barnsley in the EFL Cup. This was a bizarre game. We had chance after chance after chance. We honestly battered them, but they held on. We, never, we just didn't didn't get to put anything away at all. Um, and it went down to penalties, realistically. That's, that's how it went down. They... <laughs> Honestly, the most bizarre penalty show I've ever seen. We got through to penalties, um, and it finished 10-9 on penalties. Darlow uh, is the guy who missed our penalty. I can't really complain about that. Everyone put their penalties away, apart from our goalkeeper. Um, their goalkeeper hadn't even taken one yet, so whoever it was, I can't, I'm not sure who it was, uh, that didn't take a penalty. Was it Dummett? No, yeah, it was Dummett. Um... You're a bitch. You should be taking it before the keeper. But other than that, again, no real problem. We we lost some penalties. I can't complain too much. We really should have won that game. Um, and, and that's kind of been the trend so far. There, there, a lot of games, we, you know, realistically, we should have won um, and just haven't. It's not a great start to the season. The first month is just about to come to a close with this game here. Uh, so let's see what we can do. I rested a few players for the last game. So let's see what kind of uh, performance we can put together against this team. Right. Well, if you France staying in because Aaron's is out for another three weeks and Atsu's obviously out also. 
good news is we finally have Mitrovic back. This is his first game back. So he's not fully matched for it. He won't be starting. Um, we'll be starting Dwight Gale. But from what I've seen of the team so far, I think we could really do with a, with a solid target man um, who hopefully can bang in a few goals as well. I do like Mitrovic in, in, in real life. He's... Uh, He's a fire, He's got a fiery temper, temperament, but I think he's a, a very, very solid player. Obviously, very strong, good in the air, um, and just a pretty solid technical footballer. I think he was a good signing for Newcastle. Um, I, I think he'll come good, to be honest with you. Uh, other than that, I think we're going to stick. We're going to bring Ben back out and put Hanley back in, um, and we can have our stopper back. Uh, and we're going to take out Yedlin as well and put a wing back on defence. Okay. I always like to show, make sure that this suits uh, whatever my player's uh, style is because realistically that's how they're going to play best. So that's fine. Obviously, it's not the case with TOT, but that's because he's a defensive midfielder first and foremost. I think that's what we're going to go with. Anyone? Here to put into the subs. No, okay. So that's what we're going to go with. That's this. That's what our team is going to be going into this game <clears throat> against the Brighton and Hove Albion. That, to be honest, where are they in the league? Seventeenth. So they're just below us. We're home. Realistically, we should be winning this game. I think we should be comfortably winning this game. But we'll have to see what happens. I do need to change this because I have been playing things a little bit quicker because I can fly through these seasons now with this new with this new PC I can get through uh, through games and seasons really really quickly which is quite nice so let's do this as you can see the morale for my players isn't great either Dwight Gale has been scoring goals which is which is great um, but other than that not a lot coming in John Joe Shelby's grabbed one through a penalty we've got a few assists from Mitt Ritchie but we're missing Atsu right now so hopefully we're not going to miss him too much in this game and we're going to be able to comfortably uh, get the result. Let's see. <clears throat> Teote, I've noticed is a bit of a fiend for, for picking up yellow cards. He's uh, he's had a few already, I won't lie. And, he, and obviously he's had the red card as well. So hopefully that's not a trend. Oh, Gales hit the post. One thing I will say about the engine on this game as well is it does feel, uh, even just watching from like the, the 2D point of view, it feels a little bit less predictable which is great because you used to literally kind of know when there was going to be a chance um like basically if you if you had it up whoever had the ball was probably going to have the chance uh this time it feels a little bit less predictable like there they have the interception now they could go forwards are they going to get the chance that ball's gone forward and Dumas picked it up so now it could be us so it it, it kind of spirals a little bit more things things are a, a lot less unpredictable in that sense which i am i, I do like i like about this game it, oh nice goal from dwight gale perfect perfect start to the game seven minutes in he's grabbed us another one but as i was saying um it feels a lot um a lot a lot less predictable which is fun it makes it makes it more enjoyable to play realistically uh, dwight gale using his pace two nil Dwight Gale has been absolutely sensational when we can get him in those positions. In games, like against Reading, we really needed a, uh, a target man and uh, our Daryl Murphy just wasn't cutting it. Uh, Mitrovic would have been perfect. Dwight Gale couldn't just, he couldn't win anything in the air in that game. But when we can get him in behind, he, he works wonders. So. <clears throat> oh no, we've given away a penalty. Are you actually serious? Who's done that? All right, here we go. Hamed, come on, Darlow. That's gone in. So that's 2-1. Brighton have managed to grab one back before half-time as well, with plenty of the half left. Hopefully they're not going to not gonna matter a comeback here. Perez, Teote. Go on, get it. No, and uh, Hamed is giving it to, giving it away to Hanley. Oh, Hanley, what are you doing there? That's a great little dink over the keeper for Murray. What the fuck has Hanley done there? Honestly, awful defending. Shocking. Paul Dummett's not having a great game. Perez and Dwight Gale playing sensational football, but other than that, we're looking very, very disappointing right now. 
Uh, I'm far from pleased with what I just saw, purely because we went two it up and you let it fold. Not happy with that at all. So we've got Stockdale hoofing that upfield. Lascelles there again to win it. He's won uh, man of the match a few times, I think, just from being able to to kind of stop the the opposition attack. Oh, what a football that is! Gale flicks it on to Gufran. Gale has been a sensational performer for us so far. I will uh, say that he's been uh, perfect in in his role, um, picking up the goals that we need, and, and and that is basically what we need from him. Go on, Jose, Tiote, and it's gone back up for a corner. Richie is going to whip that one in. And we, oh, I thought we'd got a penalty there, but we're not. Okay. This is uh, one of those games in Football Manager that you can you can see go into a draw. And, and it's just going to keep going back and forth. Three all. They've pulled one back again. Not ideal. Hopefully here we're going to be able to Oh, we got another chance to nick one at the end. Sidwell, Hamed, Kyle, oh, just blasted it over. Thank God for that. Pocanioli, X West Bromway. Ayose, come on, you've got to. Yes, Perez. Good man. He's a player that I'm a massive fan of in real life as well. Um, I'm a United fan, Man United fan myself. Uh, I'd like to see him join, to be honest with you. Um, I think he he could be special, to be honest. I, I, I really like the way he plays his football. Lascelles, Tioto, Shelby, Perez, go on, group I mean, Gale gets his hat trick again, makes it 5 3. That is game over. Surely now they can't, they, they can't right? They can't, they can't score another goal. Another two. Um, so that looks like game over. Dwight Gale scored his hat trick. Uh, I probably should have taken some players off and rested them a little bit, but. Eh, it is what it is. Can't do everything. Brilliant. Very pleased with the result and the way that he played. Dwight Gale again picking up another hat trick. The man is on fire right now with, with a better team, realistically. Uh, Dwight Gale had a great game. <clears throat> uh, he, Carl Dallow, had gone 188, 87 consecutive minutes without conceding before today. Conceded three today. Uh, and uh, Jesus Gamez would have played his first ever get league game. I didn't realise that they'd only just signed him. Interesting. Um, that's how much I followed Newcastle <laughs> when they went down to the championship. Um, but that's a good result. That's a good win for us. That puts us up to eighth in the league. Um, we're still only three points away from top. I mean, it's early in the season, so it's nothing to worry about, really. We're still unbeaten in the league as well. Um, and now it looks better rather than, you know, three games without a win or two, uh, two games. Or if it could have been three games without a win today, it's five games and been looks OK. Uh, we're, we're in a, a decent position, I think. I'm not too worried. I think we will uh, clinch promotion as long as we can keep this kind of form going. Coming up now, we've got Derby, QPR, Wolves, Aston Villa and Norwich. This is not an easy month by any stretch of the imagination. But we are going to reconvene at the Norwich. Yeah, I think we're gonna. Yeah, we'll 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 come back at the Norwich game here, and I think we'll do every month. The yeah, the last game maybe of every month is, is kind of how we'll play this. If there are any games that you'd like to see, Spirits if I get promoted and you get Sunderland, then I'll uh, quite likely uh, make sure that we do a live commentary on those ones. But so far. Not too bad. Everything's looking a little bit brighter after that second win in the league. If we'd drawn that or lost it, it wouldn't have been good. But the win kind of gives me a bit more confidence. Hopefully, we can uh, we can pick up a few more wins in September um, and find ourselves at the top of the t table when I come back to you. But um, as for this episode, guys, it's going to be over. Now, nothing else has happened in regards to transfers or anything along those lines. If anything does happen, I'll let you know in the next video. But thank you guys for watching. Please do like, comment and subscribe. Like I've said before, it really does help with growing the channel. Um, and thank you guys for watching. I will see you guys next time.